So in this sound design tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can make a professional sounding house bass in the style of artists like Duke Dumont, Bontan and Disciples. And I'm going to be using Serum to do so. This is the sound that we're going to be making. How's it going guys? It's John Holt here with The Audio Journey, helping make music production accessible to all. And here on this channel, what I do is a variety of music production tutorials, mainly focused towards beginners and beyond. So if that's something that you might be interested in, then definitely consider subscribing. Now today's tutorial, as I say, is going to be using Serum, which you can get on a pay monthly plan. I'll put details in the description below. And I'm going to be using Ableton. So let's jump in and have a look. So let's go ahead and open up Serum. Now this is the preset that I'm using. It's a preset that I made and then saved, which I'll show you how to do. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and initialize this preset. Uh, so essentially just reset it. So we start from scratch and you see how to build this sort of brick by brick. Let's go to the menu, initialize preset. So that's set back to standard. Let's have a listen to this. Cool. So that doesn't really sound much like we want it to. So we want to select a different wave. And the wave that we're going to be using for this is square waves. So basic shapes under analog is where you're going to find the sort of standard waveforms uh, that you would get in most synthesizers. That's going to include sine wave, which we've started with here, triangle, sawtooth. Uh, but we want to scroll through the wavetable position until we get to a square wave, which is this one here. Um, so if we hit listen to that. So it's still quite high pitched, so we're going to turn it down an octave um, so that we can get more sort of bassy sounds out of it. And then the next thing that we want to be doing is using a filter uh, to cut out some of those high frequencies uh, so that we can really achieve that bass sound that was in the original sound. So let's go ahead and turn the filter on by clicking just up here. And then let's have a play with that and see what that cutoff filter is actually doing. There we go. So you're definitely going to need some good headphones or monitors to be able to listen to this with. Just any over-ear headphones or, or speakers will be fine. Um, what we're going to do is sculpt this sound a little bit more now using an envelope, which is just down here. Now, if you're not entirely sure what envelopes and LFOs and bits like that do, then I've got a video that I'll link up on the YouTube card that's going to take you through the basics of the Serum interface, uh, walking all the way through it. Um, which might be a good thing to just brush up on a couple of bits for if uh, you're not quite sure what this stuff's doing, but I'm going to assume a little bit of previous knowledge about envelopes, uh, but I'll go through exactly how we're using it. So envelope one um, is the amp envelope that you would see on, on many other synthesizers, which basically controls the volume of the synth over time when you press a note. So I'm going to add a little bit of attack time, not a massive amount, maybe eight, eight or so milliseconds, uh, just so that we don't get any clicking at the start of the sound. Um, we don't want the sound to completely die away after the notes played, so we'll just add a little bit of a dip in the sustain level. And then we can really use the decay sound, um, as I'll show you later on, to, to shape the sound that the synth's making. We're going to start around 350, so 357, that's fine. Um, and then add a little bit of release, a couple hundred milliseconds. And let's see what that's sounding like now if I move the cutoff around. There we go. So in a few minutes, we've got to a fairly good place. Um, when the fil filters are around here, sound, sounding pretty good. So the next thing that we need to do is basically make this filter uh, do this action. We need it to move down like that whenever a note is hit. So we get a bit of high frequency at the start, but then it comes through to just be the low frequency sound, which obviously we want from a bass. The way that we can do that um, is by something called modulation. Now modulation is just making something move uh, essentially without you having to click and drag on it like that. Um, 
And in modulation, you have uh, a modulation source, something causing the modulation, something causing the movement, and then the destination, so the thing that's being moved. The modulation source in this instance is going to be envelope one, the same one as we're using for the volume of the synth, the amp envelope. Uh, and the way that we assign that, um, or put it onto the modulation destination, or what we want to be moving, which in this instance is the filter cutoff, in Serum, you simply click and drag. That's why I love it so much. It's so intuitive. I'll demonstrate that for you now. So we literally just click and drag envelope one onto the filter cutoff, and that's assigned. So what we want to do now um, is bring this filter cutoff down. Uh, and this is the position that we want it to come down to. And the position that we want it to start at is going to be controlled by the amount of modulation or the modulation depth. The way that you adjust that is you hover just over here and you get this sort of up and down arrow thing. So you can click up and basically when we're clicking and holding, we're able to see where the filter is going to start. So we probably want it to start up there so that we get a nice bit of high frequency through. Um, but then as soon as that envelope kicks in, it's going to come down uh, and then we're just going to start hearing bass sounds, which is exactly what we want. Um, I'm going to show you how that works and the way that you can imagine it is the top of this envelope screen uh, is sort of the filter being fully open and the bottom down here is the envelope being fully closed. So let's have a listen to that. Uh, have a listen to the sound and also have a look at the filter uh, because it, it's really intuitive as I say it gives you a good visual sort of representation of what's going on in the sound. Um, that's doing what we want it to do, and that's pretty much where we're going to want to leave it. Uh, in order to make it sound a little bit more like it did at the start, we're just going to add a couple more bits uh, to do with the filter uh, that are going to help really bring that sound up and just get it from where it is now to where we want it to be. The way that we're going to do that is we're going to add something called resonance, which is res just here. And what that is, is it's an EQ boost at the filter cutoff frequency. Um, so that's going to be moving up and down as the filter is being modulated. To add that about halfway, um, you can see there, um, pointing at the screen as if you're going to see that, um, you can see that little bump on the filter. Uh, that's the EQ boost or the resonance at the filter cutoff frequency. So we'll leave that there. We're going to add some drop. Oops, pull that back. Um, we're going to add some drive, uh, which is like gain, adds a little bit of grip to the sound, uh, and then fat as well. I'm not 100% sure what this does for me, perfectly honest, but it sounds perfect and it sounds exactly like what we're going for for this sound. So we'll add a bit of that in there. You can obviously do that to taste. Um, let's have a listen to that sound now and see if we're getting any closer to the sound that we had at the start. Apologies, that was clipping a little bit on the way out. If you look at the meter just up in the top right, cor right corner, we're about here. And that's redlining quite hard. Not redlining, not headlining, but no, not in serum. Um, we'll pull that down and make sure that's not clipping. Um, and then tweak that again. There we go, so that's pretty close to the sound that we had initially. Now what I'm gonna do is give you a couple of extra tips if you wanna take this further, um, add a little bit of character to your sounds, add, make them a little bit more unique using a couple of more advanced techniques. Um, the technique that I'm gonna show you is something called FM synthesis or frequency modulation. So the way that we do that, I'm gonna make oscillator B duplicate into, uh, sorry, oscillator A duplicate into oscillator B. The way that we do that is go to the menu, Copy oscillator A to B, and there we go. Got the same settings, going to drop the volume all the way down. And essentially what frequency modulation is, or FM synthesis, is it's making one wave, so oscillator B in this instance, 
modulate the frequency of oscillator A. You don't really need to have too much of an in-depth understanding unless you want to sort of read into it. Um, but essentially, it produces some really nice sort of character on the sound that you're modulating. The sound massively depends on uh, both of the waves, both the modulating wave and the carrier wave. So the carrier wave is the wave that's being affected, so the bass in this instance. And the modulating wave is this one, which returns the volume all the way down on. So we're not actually going to be able to hear this directly. We're only going to be able to hear the effect that it's having on oscillator A. So in order to turn this on, we come into the warp menu on oscillator A here. This is the one that we want to be affected. And we do FM or frequency modulation from B. What we can then do um, is dial it up. And I'm going to play it and dial it up so that you can hear the kind of sounds. So I think the first third sounds really cool. Second third's a little bit more wacky. And the last third is really quite wacky. And you do get some phase cancellation at points, which you might hear. And we'll see what that sounds like. And I'll show you how I tend to use it in a bass sound. That sounds cool. That's phase cancellation. Cool. So you heard what that sounded like at different points. Um, you can obviously go for the uh, the one that you think is is best, the one that suits your kind of style. Uh, but the way that I like to do it is I generally tend to set it about here. So we'll dial that in as it's playing. I think that sounds pretty cool. So I'm also going to apply a little bit of modulation to that just to keep things moving in this patch and keep it interesting. So I'm going to use envelope one again to modulate. So this is going to be modulating the amplitude, the volume, the filter cut off, and um, the frequency modulation. So click and drag that on there. I want it to modulate that much. So this is where I had it, where it sounded cool. This is the pretty much off state. So it's just going to add a little bit of FM to the front of the sound, to the transient, and give it that little bit more character, help it cut through the mix. Um, yeah, I just think it sounds sounds pretty cool. So let's give that a play. There we go. So what I would recommend doing if you really want to take this a little bit further is change the modulating wave, change the octave of it as well. That, that definitely changes the sound. Uh, and experiment with what you think sounds cool. That's a, a real way that professional producers um, dig in and get some really complex sounds uh, from simple wave shapes like a square wave. That's a way that they make their sounds unique, essentially. So the last thing that I'm going to show you is how to save this patch and then a little bonus bit of how to load a patch into Serum if you downloaded one, for example. So I'm actually going to give you the patch that I've made so that you can download it and have a play with it. And I'm going to show you how to load that into your version of Serum, whether you're on Mac or PC. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to come up to the menu and go show Serum presets folder. Now, this is just a folder on your computer that was installed when you installed Serum. And this is where you can put your own presets in, uh, whether you've downloaded them from somewhere else or whether you've been given them, like I'm giving you one. Um, you come to presets and then these that you see here, these folders, if we go back to Serum, are what you see in here. So we've got a uh, user in there. Do, 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 do. So if we go back to my finder. What you would essentially do is you would download the preset. I'm going to give you a download link in the description below. And then you would put the file into here. So in my downloads folder, let's imagine this random PDF was my uh, Serum preset. I'll uh, open that Serum presets folder again. New window. All you would do, go to presets, user, or wherever you want to put it. You can make a new folder like I have there and simply drag and drop it in. I'm not going to drag that um, Word document in there, obviously, but that is all you have to do in order to load your own presets and then shut Serum down and open it again. And you'll have that new preset. In order to save your own patches from inside Serum, all you do is hit the save button just here. Choose a name and you're good to go. 
Then you can come back to these exact settings anytime you want by going to demo. There we go. So there we are guys, I really hope that tutorial has been useful for you and if it has then please do leave this video a like. It means a lot to me and it helps me know what you guys are enjoying and what I need to improve on. So I'm going to be doing more sound design tutorials going forward. There's going to be a playlist on my channel of sound design tutorials. So be sure to keep up with that if that's something you're interested in. And if there's anything in particular that you want to see, then drop me a message either from the contact links in the description or leave a comment and I'd be really happy to add that to my video list for you. So I really hope you've enjoyed that. I've been John Hart with The Audio Journey. I really hope to see you guys again soon. Take care.